Easy Money grabbed the referee's shirt and then, and then Mule kicked it. Ray Steele. Now he's going for that turnaround suplex right on the back of his head. One, two, three. He got, got him. Come on. He didn't get it clean, but he got him. There you go. Easy Money is the winner. Hangs on to that title strap. It was close. Wait a minute. Money's going to make some comments here. Let's see what he's got to say. You know what, Ray Steele? You've proved tonight you're good. There's no doubt about that. But Easy Money's simply the best. What? Easy Money? Hold up, hold up. Easy Money. Did I hear you say you're the best? Is your head getting bigger every day? Well, come December 12th, Dayton, Ohio. Punk, I'm going to let your eyes, your nose, and your lips all follow suit. Because I'm going to knock you straight out. And you'll you're see who here. the best is. Welcome to HWA Wrestling. Last week, D'Lo Brown told champion Easy Money he would show him who the best was in Dayton, which is this Wednesday night. However, they are both in the building today, and it could explode right here on TV. Cut I'm the music. Left Thatcher, and with me at ringside, WWF official Kevin Kelly. Oh, that's right, Les. It could heat up right here today. Cruiserweight champ Jamie Noble in the house. Helena Heavenly will be on his arm. Matt Stryker here as well. Charlie Haas, Cody Hawk, Lance Cade, more. Plus, we hear a rumor that Mike Sanders has made peace with Commissioner Patrick Black. What in the world is that all about? Now, let's go up to the uh, ring with the HWA Heavyweight Champion. Now, cut the music. If you can't tell by the look on my face, Easy Money is a man on a mission. And that mission has become the greatest HWA Heavyweight Champion of all time. It started in Dayton when I had to go through a 16-man elimination tournament, defeat D'Lo Brown, probably the greatest former champion of all time. And then last week, I defeated the ex-champion, Ray Steele, right in the middle of this very ring. One, two, three, fair and square. And tonight, I have to face yet another former HWA champion in the form of surfer Cody Hawk. Well, Cody Hawk, bring your big surfboard out here because Easy Money is about to show you exactly why he's simply the best. Well, one thing for sure, there's no lack of confidence in the Easy Money camp, Kevin. No, Easy Money is good and he will tell you just how good he is, but is he good enough to withstand the challenge of a former champion? About to find out as surfer Cody Hawk makes his way into HWA ring. Let's go to Hawk for the introduction. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is an HWA heavyweight. Whoa! Uh, money. <laughs> Leaving nothing to chance here. Kevin, he nailed it, blindsided him, I should say, before even the introductions were completed. You know, it seems as if even though Easy Money is the champion, he wants to prove to everybody that he is the best. And we will find out just how great Easy Money is. Ah, profiling just a little too much, and Cody Hawk rides him like a surfboard, goes for the front face lock, hooks the arm. You think that riding position is good for amateur wrestling as well? <laughs> I don't think so. What's the deal with Patrick Black and Mike Sanders? Guys. As the commissioner and his most hated adversary made peace? That's a good question. Oh my goodness. That is a Rumors good are swirling, Les. I just yeah. got into town, and I'm so happy to be by your side. But all everybody's talking about, they're all wondering, what's the deal with Patrick Black and Mike Sanders? Well, you know, Sanders uh, can't be that easy a pushover. I don't believe there's got to be something up his sleeve. He was too, uh, what, kissing the boots of the commissioners we saw in the video. Yeah. Cody Hawk makes the drive. Sanders. Whoa. Money takes him up and over and drops him. Really used Cody Hawk's momentum there. That's the danger with high risk. And now let's see if Easy Money can capitalize. German suplex. Gets a two in. Money's bitten off a big hunk and talking about beating all the former HWA champions. Let's see if he can chew it. Cody Hawk, former tag team champion, former HWA single champion. A fine competitor, but right now having his hands full with Money, who's running on that adrenaline rush of having won that title just a few weeks back. Well, you know, the competition here in the HWA, so intense right now, and no more intense than we'll see this Wednesday night. 
what a night it is going to be back at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds. Absolutely, and of course at Montgomery County, uh, WWF superstar Rakishi will oh, be in the house. Rakishi going to be there. Yes, and the MTV Tough Enough winner, Maven Huffman, will be joining HWA. I'll tell you what, if Maven thought he was tough enough to win the WWF contract, let's see if he's tough enough to survive here in HWA. Is he tough enough to go to Dayton and become successful in his debut? And of course, uh, it all comes together this Wednesday night, Montgomery County Fairgrounds, when HWA comes to town. This is the punch. Hawk pulls him off, takes him high, drops him face first. And this could be the move that turns the title battle, Kevin. New champion. Oh, wow. Just that close. Just a matter of one second separates Tony Hawk from winning that HWA title back. Hawk goes to the tackle, telegraphed uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. Tombstone. No, wait a minute. Great counter. Tombstone for easy. No counter by him. Oh, pretty reversal. And back to the arm bar. Cody takes him up. Tucks him, goes for it. Riptide. But now can he capitalize? Oh! oh. With this crowd all sense that a new champion was about to be crowned. Cody Hawk can feel it. The momentum is all on the side of the former champion. And how is Easy Money going to proclaim himself to be that great if he doesn't even win here against Cody Hawk? Wait a minute now. Here he goes for it. Hawk now. See if money can invert. Yeah! Got it. Drives it home. Two, three, and easy money scores the win. But it wasn't an easy win for easy money. Cody Hawk gave him all he could handle. Oh, well, wait a minute now. Uh, hey, buddy. Hey, brother. Let me help you out there. Yeah. Hey. Hey, good match. Good match. You know what, Cody Hawk? You're a good wrestler, right? Give it up for him. He's a good, good wrestler. But you know what? You know what? Easy Money is simply the best. And you know what? I wish I had D'Lo Brown out here because there's two words that I would love to say to you, D'Lo Brown. Well, you know what those two words are? Oh, good. Oh. We're not going to hear the two words, but what Easy Money is seeing is star. And Dino Brown takes him high on the backdrop. And we've got unscheduled action now as the former champion, Dino Brown, opens up on Easy Money. Oh, he's not forget what happened in Dayton. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the chase is on. They're fighting all over the arena, right underneath us. Well, it looks like we're, uh, yeah, we're going to have to take a break. Dino Brown wants some quality time with the champ before Wednesday night in Dayton. As we mentioned, the story is Mike Sanders and Patrick Black have made peace. We're going to take a look at that tape from last week here at the HWA headquarters. Yeah. Hang on a second. Come on in. Hey. Now, hang on. I got to go hey, here. Uh, hey, Commissioner Black or Mr. Black or... Uh, Mike, why are you here? Well, look, um, I, I know you and I have had some issues in the past, and I, I'm sorry. Man, I'm sorry. I, from the bottom of my heart, I am truly sorry. Now, I got to thinking about it. Boy, you made a lot of sense last week when you were talking about that open door policy. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I can see the light. And I'd like to walk through that door and do nothing but help out the cause. What cause is that? Because I need a job. Oh, really? Yeah, yes, sir. i tell you what, Mike. I just happen to have a contract right here for you. To sign. That'd be great. Let me make sure the proper papers are in order here and all this stuff. Let's see your guidelines, stuff like this. Okay, Mike, here's a pen for you. Here you go. Here's the guidelines on the back. I don't, I don't even need to read it. Are you kidding me? I don't even need to read it. You just show me where to sign. Sign on that. Is that the... That, that's all you need to sign? Mr. Black. Cool. Welcome to the team, Mike. Thank you, man. I, I, uh, Pat, Mr. Black. Oh, you can call me Patrick. You can Patrick. call me Patrick. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. More Heartland Wrestling Association action. I've been joined in the ring by... The HWA Commissioner Patrick Black and the above average Mike Sanders and Mr. Sanders 
uh, before the break, we saw you groveling and begging and pleading for a job in Mr. Black's office. And I'm just wondering, now that you have signed this contract with the HWA, how loyal are you really going to be to the organization? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Cornette, sometimes you got to know when you're whipped. Now, last week, Patrick Black himself said he had an open door policy. I walked into that door and I asked Mr. Pa I asked Patrick Black himself, would he be willing to have Mike Sanders on his team? Now, I've strayed before. Patrick Black offered his hand and offered me a contract. I mean, I'm about as happy as happy can be because for HWA equals future for Mike Sanders. Well, there you have it, Mr. Black. Obviously, uh, Mike Sanders signed the contract. You guys actually, that sounded pretty good. I almost had you guys. Patrick Black, oh. you have got to be the biggest idiot, and I mean idiot, that I've ever, ever met in my entire life. Just by chance. I mean, he's just kind of just throwing this out there at you. Have you ever looked at an HWA contract? Have you ever looked at one? He's a commissioner. Have you ever looked at an HWA contract? Well, I've looked at it. And my lawyer has really looked at it. Let me explain something to you right quick. Paragraph, paragraph, paragraph five. Paragraph five, subsection A under termination. What does that say? Under, let somebody that can read, read it. What it says is in order to terminate a wrestler in the HWA, you have to have a unanimous decision by the review board. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, you tell me. How many people are on that review board? How many? Total of three. Total of three, exactly. And you, my friend, are just one of those three. Now, that's right. I'm a, you can suspend me. And you can find me. But you, Patrick Black, as an individual, cannot fire me. Now, let me explain something else to you. No, 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 no. Don't get excited. Okay? Don't get excited. Because I know you got that little feeling in the back of your neck like, man, what a fool am I. Okay? Now, just last week, correct me, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you signed two more individuals to the exact same contract, two of my friends to the exact same contract. These guys are in the same boat I am. Let me bring them out. Reno and Lance K. Guys, come on out. Oh, boy. You know, most of the time when a wrestler signs a contract with the HWA, he's not going into it with the idea of getting fired. You know, sometimes, Jim Cornette, you got to wiggle your way around these things. Patrick Black, you know that feeling I just told you you had? See, what you were thinking is you, when you signed these contracts, you said, okay, I've got three whipped little puppies. When in fact, what you've got is three Christian God-fearing Americans that have rights, and I mean legal rights. You can suspend us, you can fire us. I mean, you can suspend us and you can fine us, but you cannot fire us. I think we've made that point abundantly clear, and Patrick, I've got to ask you, and it looks to me to be the standard HWA wrestler's contract. It does look to be binding, but uh, does this cause you a problem? Mike Sanders, you're right. I cannot fire you. I can suspend you or fine you. But remember this. This goes for you too also. That if you three step out of bounds, that will happen. And that goes for you, Mike Sanders. That goes for you, Lance Cade. And yes, that goes for you, Reno. You know, Patricia, this deal with you coming out here week after week, shooting your mouth off with your cute little Kmart tie and your cute little $2 shirt is getting real old. I suggest you bark up another tree, buddy, and go down the block and try another one. Let me tell you something, Reno. If you touch me, that will be a $2,000 fine. Hey, now, wait a minute. Come on, now, watch that man. Control that man, for God's sake. Sanders, are you out of your mind? Patrick, I'm sorry about that, man. I'm, I'm sorry. It, man, get your shirt and everything. Get yourself together. I mean, you said you were going to find him $2,000. If he hit you? $2,000. Reno, hit that SOB twice. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, man. Wait, wait. Jim, Jim, Cornette trying to pull him oh, off. Come on. Throws him down. Are you believing this, Kevin? Uh, man, man. Oh, when it man. comes to Mike Sanders and his treachery, there's nothing, there's nothing that I won't believe. Wait a minute, Shannon Moore, David Flair, oh, Nick Gensmore hit the ring. In just the nick of time. Wow. I am not. What an embarrassment for the HWA. Yes, it's no doubt Mike 
Sanders. I think he's pulled one over on Commissioner Patrick Black. He's saying he can't be fired, fined, or suspended, maybe. But anyway, whatever it means, the HWN and its wrestlers are in for more Mike Sanders-style trouble. trouble. Oh, boy. You're not kidding. We're going to be back with Mark Jindrak against Lance Cade right after this. Just like the proverbial bad penny, seems like Mike Sanders and Lance Cade just keep turning up, Kevin. Right now, we're going to the ring, the host with the introductions. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is a singles match. Introducing first in the ring from San Antonio, Texas, with Mike Sanders, Lance Cade, and his opponent. Mike Sanders, that ingracious smile of his. I'm sure there's a lot of guys in the back that like to wipe the smile off of that face. Boy, you know, and here's one of those guys right here, oh, Mark yeah. Indrak. He hails from Atlanta, Georgia, and he is Mark Indrak. You know, Kevin, uh, it's been almost three months ago now, that, or two months ago at least, that uh, Sanders sicked the dog, so to speak, on Mark Indrak because he didn't seem to be holding up the Sanders end of the WCW invasion. So this is Gendrak's first shot back at uh, Mike Sanders. And with Lance Cade on the rise, Les, I know you would agree with that. The Lance Cade, a breakout star, ready to make the move into the upper echelon of the HWA. A guy like Gendrak coming in with an axe to grind against Mike Sanders could be just the key to derail Cade's plans and really wipe that smug look off the face of Mike Sanders. You're absolutely right, Kevin, right now. Oh, no, I that. Gendrak, the former basketball player, Shows what a great vertical leap he's got and great mobility. Boy, poor Patrick Black, he was breaking out in hives less in the ring when he realized that, yes, indeed, there, there is a bit of a loophole, shall we say, in the contract that Patrick Black cannot fire Mike Sanders, Reno, and Lance Cade. It would take an action of the review board, three members strong. But then for Reno to just go out and slug Patrick Black, knowing that a $2,000 fine was coming, I mean, that's just reckless disregard for the well-being of Patrick Black. And of course, he's got to understand politically, he's not putting himself in a great position on down the road for title challenges or anything well, else. And think about it, how's it going to look to the review board? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, wouldn't, if I'm Patrick Black right now, the first thing I'm doing after my, the swelling of my jaw goes down is I'm getting on the phone with that review board and I'm going to look to find a way out of this country. Absolutely right. Patrick nice. Black will be burning the midnight oil, just trying to find a way to rid himself of the free stooges. How was that? Reno, well, you know, Sanders, and Cade. All of us in the World Wrestling Federation, we were so happy at the conclusion of Survivor Series because we knew it was going to be the end of the alliance as we knew it. And the same thing happened here in the HWA. We knew that guys like Sanders were going to be gone. But you said it, a bad penny continuing to turn up. Mike Sanders just won't go away. Exactly. Oh, get Indrak up. loops them in there. Look at those. Left. The chop from the right side. Cade reverses the whip, drives the knee in, and drops big mark. Man, you know, we're talking about the great card coming your way this Wednesday night, Dayton, Montgomery County Coliseum. We also want to mention that this Friday night, that's December the 14th, Clark State Community College in Springfield. It hosts HWA Wrestling at the gym. That's right. We got a special deal with uh, students. Bring your ID, you get a discount on tickets right there. Referee David Hopkins, a two count on Jindrak. Cade holding his own with the big man. And I think Mark Jindrak would prefer to have Mike Sanders in that ring right now, honestly. Can you imagine all this time that's passed? How badly Mark Jindrak wants to get his hands, wants to get his hands around the neck of Mike Sanders. Look here, he's so close. That probably oh. doesn't even know Sanders is breathing down his neck. Yeah, but Jindrak vicariously beating Mike Sanders by doing a number here on Lance Cade. What a matchup this has been. Oh. A left hand, two more. Another left by Gindrak. Goes to the hip lock. Takes. Cade drops him. Where's he going here? Drop kick. Gindrak looking to put Lance Cade away. I'm telling you what, just as uh, out of control as this Mike Sanders is, the personal personal differences around the HWA heavyweight title continue to exist between D'Lo Brown, D'Lo Brown and Easy Money. Les, something's got to give with that situation. You're absolutely right. It certainly does. Look here. Nice. Ducks, ducks the clothesline. Drops him with that side suplex. 
Going for the cover, gets a one, two. Oh! So two and a half, so close, and yet so far away. Kay's looking for an impressive win, but he's just got to hang on at this point. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, his feet are on the ropes, the referee never saw. He got the three count, but he went as good as stole this one, Kevin, with those feet on that second rope. Man, oh man, oh man. Cade, not too far from breaking out, as you said. The face of a high schooler, but the heart of a pirate. And of course, hanging out with Mike Sanders doesn't Don't do look him at any me, good. Mike Sanders. Don't look at me. Don't try to sell your bill of goods here to me. <laughs> exactly. Good, good effort by Mark Dendrak. We'll be back with a six man tag team action right after this. All right, we're back. We've got six man tag team action coming up. And Kevin, three hot ones in the ring. That's right, the trio Brad. Ray Steele and Charlie Haas compromise three of the most talented youngsters in either WWF to call camp, but they will have their problems. They're going to have their hands full with three very former, tough former WCW stars. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it's a six-man tag team event. Introducing first, hailing from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Ray Steele. From the combat zone in downtown Boston, Massachusetts, who's your daddy, Steve Bradley? And from Edmond, Oklahoma, Charlie Haas. And their opponents. And their opponents. They're coming to the ring. These three, you mentioned former WCW invaders, Johnny the Bull, Lance LaRue, and Reno. All with strong athletic backgrounds. However, their in ring style is more suited for backstreet brawling. Let's go for the introduction. Coming to the ring. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York, Johnny. And from Las Vegas, Nevada, Reno. And from the LaRue Bayou and Lafayette, Louisiana, the Big Mac Raw Daddy, Les LaRue. All right, we're ready to roll. Six man tag team action. It looks like Ray Steele out to start for his trio. And Johnny the Bull. Johnny with new attire, new wrestling truck, showing off those wheels. And he's been to the gym with them too, Kev. That guy's in great shape. Yeah, and it looks like his uh, thumb is finally healed and a good thing for everybody involved that that cast is finally off. Yeah, that was an extra additional weapon that Bull yeah. uh, found to utilize. On uh, you know, I basis. wonder if that thumb was ever broken at all. Good question. Good question. We mentioned uh, three uh, bright up and gummers in Bradley, Ray Steele, and Charlie Haas. The three in the other corner are bright stars in this industry yeah, as well, Kevin. They certainly are, and I'm glad to see that they get opportunity to continue to further their careers, but for somebody like Reno to just go out before and slug Patrick Black, I mean, really, there's no call for it. No, not at all. I mean, it's not necessary if, if he's trying to show how tough he was. After all, he's pounding on a non-athletic guy who's the commissioner. It's not like he's another wrestler. Yeah, I mean, probably the most non-athletic guy I've ever seen on the yeah. HWA TV show. There you go. No slight to Mrs. Black at home. <laughs> Bradley misses the elbow. Lance loops the right hands in. What is he, the stooge from Baton Rouge this week? What is he, <laughs> something else every week with Lash? He entertains me this last week. The Ayatollah, Shrimp Creole. Oh, please. <laughs> Bradley gets a two count. Grabs the arm, windmills it, makes the tag. You know, I learned a lot about Lash LaRue and seeing that hanging with him, but that was great. His artistic talent, second to none. And right now, Charlie Haas and Steve Bradley and Ray Steele combining to show Lash uh, another need for another talent. It's like Reno made the blind tag. That's the whip Charlie Haas set up. Oh, as Reno goes to roll the dice, Haas hooks him. Reno kicks out. Always back to the amateur fundamentals for Charlie Haas. That will never leave Charlie. That's the reason why Kurt Angle is so successful, is because when the chips are down, as you know, you can always go back to the fundamentals and basics to, to extricate yourself out of problems. Absolutely, Kevin. Of course, Reno, that uh, underground shoot fighter. Oh, look out. Wait a minute now. Right now, the referee's got all he can handle as Bull and Lash double up in the corner. Bull and Reno now on the double arm whip. Take him catch. up, find him on the base of his spine into that canvas. Two count as Charlie Haas kicks out. You know, we're all concerned that when Russ uh, was laid up, that, you know, how frustrating would that be for Charlie? But he's fit right in with other tag team partners that go 
show what a versatile performer he is, Kevin. He certainly is. It's been a real coming of age, a growing period, I know, for Charlie. He's going to learn. He's learning a valuable lesson here. Don't get yourself caught. And now make a tag. Come on, Charlie. Charlie spared him, but he does it look like he can pull it together. He needs to make that tag. He needs to either get the Bradley or steal right now. LaRue is trying to make the tag himself. Hang him on for dear life. Makes the tag to Johnny the Bull. And Lash. yes. Great ring presence by Lash LaRue. That's it. They're trying to cut the ring off on Charlie Haas. Bull needs to pull him back three or four feet. And is he going to give Charlie a chance? Charlie should have dove to the corner instead. Blocks. Bull takes nice. him over in a belly to belly. Now he needs to make the tag. The time is now. Absolutely. He needs to find his way to that corner. His team needs a fresh man right now to shut down Johnny the Bull. Let's see, they're both going. Bull makes the tag. In comes La Reno and Bradley. Opens up first Reno, then LaRue. Drops Johnny the Bull. The bad boy from Boston on the move. Fine buster, but the save is made by Lash LaRue. Ray Steele moves in, pitches LaRue to the outside. Race. Oh! Man, oh man. We've got almost a six man battle royal now as all six guys are going someplace. Got it. There it is. And Reno stops. Race, excuse me, Steve Bradley with the roll of the dice. What a devastating move. Just that quickly. Reno may be $2,000 lighter, but he scores a victory for his team. He certainly did, and they come up your winners, and we'll be back to talk to Matt Stryker right after these commercial messages. All right, we're back, and joining us, uh, former Cruiserweight champion Matt Stryker, and of course, this Wednesday night in Dayton, and then Friday in uh, Springfield, you've got a shot at not only just Jamie Noble, but your former lady friend, Alina Heavenly, right? That's right, Les, and I can't wait to get my hands on not only him, but the chance to get my hands on Helena Heavenly. Oh my God, Les, you know how bad I want this. Yes, I do. You saw what happened at Dayton. I had the Cruiserweight title won around my waist. I gave it my all, Les, and I gave it my best shot. And we all saw what she did to me from behind. Right, well, I know this all started as just a shot at Jamie Noble to get the title back. And now it's turned in more of a personal issue. It's not about belts, it's about people. Les, I can't say that I don't care about that cruiserweight belt, but this is more about revenge than anything else. I want a piece of that little boy. And of course, you're, you're going to have some ladies keeping uh, watching your back from your former lady friend because of Brandy uh, Alexander in Dayton and then Victoria in Springfield. Well, Les, I don't know too much about Brandy Alexander, although she is a tough fireball. I do know that. But Victoria, I've seen her go quite a few times, and I know that girl can hold her own, whether it's against a woman or a man. And of course, I know how bad you want Noble, but if you were to get your hands on Helena, what what exactly have you got in mind? Les, I, I don't even, I don't know what I would do if I got my hands around her. I just, I can't even tell you. I just, oh, I just would like to snap her in half is what I'd like to but do. But you want to get through this, and then you want to focus once again on regaining that cruiserweight time. That's right, Les. That is the goal at hand. I want a shot at Jamie Noble one-on-one -on -one for the cruiserweight title. Well, certainly that's going to, you're going to, this opportunity to even a score with, with Jamie and, oh, wait a minute, hold on. What, now, wait a minute. What's this? Uh, striker, Daisy Striker, Mayer. shut your mouth! Hey, we're trying to conduct an interview up here. Oh man, you can sit there and shut your mouth too. Matt Striker, what's it going to take for me to get rid of you? When are you going to realize you're not in my league? You can't lace my boots on your best day, Max Striker. I'm sitting in the back. I hear you out here having some kind of pity party for yourself. Talking about you did your best. You gave it all you had. Let me tell you something, Max Striker. Losers give it their best. Losers cry about doing all they can do. Winners like me get the ball, score the touchdown, and go home with the prom queen. Jamie Noble, the only touchdown you ever scored was in a midget football game. And we all know how many times Helena's ran with the ball. So why don't you put that belt on the line and let me come down whoa, 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 here and whoa, whoa, teach whoa. you a lesson. No, 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 nobody 
said nothing about a title shot. I'm not out here in my wrestling gear. I don't got my wrestling boots on. I got my mud hole stomping boots on. So you gonna bark all day, little doggy, or you gonna come a bite? If it's a fight you want, give me 10 seconds, I'll be there. Whoa, well, there we go. I don't know what this is. We don't have a match schedule here, but it looks like we got uh, This ain't a match, it's a oh, fight. Oh, oh. No, no, we'll try to get that shirt off. Matt Stryker's dropping him. It's like a hockey fight. Yes, Robert Briscoe runs into a fish shape. What a, I'm not sure what we're going to call it. It's certainly not a title match. It's unscheduled. And right now, Stryker takes that shirt off of Jamie Noble and chokes him down with it. And we got ourselves an unsanctioned street fight. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, oh. Yes. He's dragging Noble in. I don't know if Elias is going to get up for that one anytime soon. He banged their heads together. And right now, Matt Stryker is on fire. Oh. Spears him down. Big collision. Oh, man. It's like an old-fashioned street fight right now. Yes, it is. Neither one of these guys scheduled to wrestle on this event. But certainly, this is a man, oh man, look at here, Stryker blocks him. Noble is shot to the midsection, beating him down across the top of the shoulders. Takes him up, side suplex. And Briscoe's counting, so I'm assuming we're going to take this as a match. We're going to fill the segment with it, and I'm not sure what significance whoever wins this thing is going to have. But uh, nonetheless, we're seeing a battle between two guys who are just as soon reach inside of the other guy's chest and rip his heart out. Well, you said that right. The words of Matt Stryker, and he knows that in the back of his mind, not only does he want to get his hands on, on Jamie Noble, get back the Cruiserweight title, but he wants revenge on the woman who scorned him. That's Helena Heavenly with a big knot on her head down here at the ringside area. Stryker with a power slam. Now he's going to throw a few right hands of his own at Jamie Noble. It's not about the title right now. It's personal. He says, get up. And he got a oh. leg whip across the head. Snap Noble's head back. Yes, he did. And Stryker is showing no mercy. He's right on top of him. I, you know, and I don't know here if Briscoe starts to count when he disqualifies somebody. I'm not sure what to say. Look here. Oh, look at that. The nails dug in the eyes of Matt Stryker. DDT by Jamie Noble. And he gets a three down on Matt Stryker. Due entirely, Kevin, to Helena Heavenly's interference. Boy, the treachery never stops with these two. Well, it appears that Mr. and Mrs. Sportsmanship have scored a victory of sorts. Yeah, right. Although no match was officially made. However, Wednesday night, Helena will have her hands full with Brandy Alexander and Victoria on Friday. And the outcome just might be different. When we come back, the Funkster. No! Will be our Oh, oh my goodness. The Funkster. Yes, he will be in our ring and we'll be back with him right after. All right, we're back. We've got singles action coming up in the ring. He is Gotti, a headliner. Some of the lower level Indies is going to the HWA trying to win the big spot. Let's see if he can do it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and it's a singles match. Introducing first, in the ring, from Raleigh, North Carolina, the other dark meat, Gotti! And his opponent. And have you seen this guy yet, Kevin? Have you had a chance to take a look at the next gentleman entering? I, I don't believe what I'm seeing! <laughs> oh my god! I'd heard about it! Hailing from Venice Beach, California, he is the Funkster! <laughs> you know, I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag earlier on, but I had seen uh, that the Funkster was planning on competing here this week, and, and I just, I've been so excited about the ability, the opportunity to see him live. Yeah, he's a trip, no two ways to that. Out of the Funk, a.k.a. Kwee Wee, a.k.a. the Funkster, marches to his own beat. Well, you said that right. Yeah, crazy gimmicks aside, this guy's in great shape, and he can go. Kevin. Well, he certainly is. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know, does he, does he channel the spirit? I, how does he do it? I'm not quite sure. But uh, Gotti, like you said, going to try to make a name for himself here in the HWA now. And uh, let's see if he can do it at the expense of the Funkster. Yes, the Funkster. 
Throws the punch, shoots Gotti into the corner. A little close line, shoots him again. Falls with another close line. And you know the mannerisms, the expressions on the fixture. Well, I don't have to tell you who they remind me of. No, absolutely <laughs> not. It's almost like someone stuck that guy into a uh, commercial uh, dryer and he shrunk a little bit. <laughs> I'll and tell you what, though. Alan Funk, call him whatever you want. I mean, he is one tremendous athlete. You're right. I don't think I ever saw his uh, legacy do that uh, leapfrog no. that way. Uh, my normal partner up here, Jim Hornet, said, this guy, don't, the, old, the original guy didn't move like this. No. <laughs> and I would have to agree. The Funkster, quite an entertaining young man. Oh, God, he got him on that one. Delegate, poke to the eye, rake to the back. Well, this guy has been on the Indies, hasn't he? Yes, he has. <laughs> that vanity pin, when you can see daylight under the guy's chest trying to make the pin, you know he's not going to hold anybody down. Gotti puts the boots to the Funkster now, trying to gain some sort of advantage. And, of course, a win for Gotti on this television over this guy would be a feather in his cap, no doubt about it, Kevin. Things are not looking good, though, for the Funkster right now. No, they're not. Gotti dropping his way down across the shoulders, taking the wind out of the sails of the Funkster. And the Funkster coming up slow now. Gotti for the arm whip, shoots him in, comes with a clothesline. Rake to the back. Let's see what's going to happen now. Funk. Gotti should be trying to put him away. Funkster gets the boot up. He gets the boot up. Gotti throws a punch. Throws a punch. He should be trying to pin him uh -oh. here. Wait a minute. Listen Wait to this minute. crowd. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> He's Funkstering up. Oh, yes. I don't believe it. Yes. <laughs> Throws to throw that right hand, but the Funkster cuts him off, loops the rights of his own, arm whips him in, gets the boot! Here he goes, leg drop for the cover. Yeah! Yes, and he does get a three All right, justice prevails there, Les. The Funkster stops the forces of evil this time in the form of Gotti. Yes, he does, and we'll be back with a tag. Team champions, the Island Boys, right after this. Oh, yeah, this. brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back and ready for our main event. It's going to be the HWA Tag Team Champions, the Island Boys, facing Sting and Liar. No, 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 no. No, no. I mean, Jimmy Yang and Kaz Hayashi. Let's go for the introduction. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is a non title contest. It's the first from Venice Beach, California, the Yanger, and from Tokyo, Japan, the great Hayashi, and their opponents. He just sprayed the clear mist. <laughs> what I'm wondering is what the Japanese booking office is thinking. I don't know. Mist. Or are they? That's better. They talk about the tag team championship, they talk about size. They are the oh, biggest yeah. of the HWA. It's the OG and Kimo, the Island Boy. HWA Tag Team Champion. Hailing from the island of Samoa, they are the HWA Tag Team Champions, OG Ekmo and Kimo, the Island Boy. And I, ever I saw a place where speed versus size, this would be it, Kevin. Yang and Hayashi have a lot of speed. They're going to need every, every mile an hour of it against these two big battle wagons and almost 800 pounds of ECMO and Kimo. And if I'm uh, the Yanger and the great Hayashi, I'm wondering what uh, Tiger Hung Lo has in for me. <laughs> or does he like them at all? I don't know. <laughs> That's... Kimo is not sure what's going on here. Lining him up and a headbutt sends uh, 
Ah, uh, there's some speed. Yes. The Yanger splash. And of course, speed is important in our sport, Kevin. But to unseat these guys as tag team champions, it's going to take some muscle mass to go along with the knowledge and the speed. I know Echo and Chemo plan on uh, going to Dayton this Wednesday, defending those tag team titles, Montgomery County Fairgrounds Coliseum. As we mentioned, uh, uh, Rikishi's going to be there, plus uh, Maven Huffman, the Tough Enough winner, will be making his uh, HWA debut. Renaissance Music, Smithville Road in Dayton, and Grips and Tips on Central Avenue, West Carrollton, the places to get your advance tickets, which are on sale right now for this Wednesday night extravaganza, a tremendous card at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds Coliseum. Of course, two nights later, we are in Springfield, Friday the 14th, that's this Friday, at the Clark State Community College Gym in Springfield. And oh, the Student oh, Affairs, oh, oh, man, oh man, the Student Affairs Office on the campus will be, at Rhodes Hall, will be handling advanced tickets, 937-328-6084, 10 and 8 bucks, and all big brothers and sisters, and students with current ID for eight bucks. And of course, we might mention that WWF superstar Rakishi will be on both of those shows. Absolutely. And you know, oh man. Along with great stars like Val Venus, D'Lo Brown, Easy Money, Ray Steele, Haku, Steve Blackman. Mother. What a great array of stars. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens if Stryker gets his hands not only on Jamie Noble, but also on Haleda Heavenly. And you have to wonder too, what will what will Mike Sanders have up his sleeve next? Will he pull out any more surprises, any more tricks in either Dayton or in Springfield this coming week? Look at that. Oh, my God. You know, the fact that Kaz Hayashi is more than just a grease spot on that canvas is a testament to his fine conditioning. Absolutely. <laughs> but the match isn't over yet. No, that's true. Now, of course, you know, this is uh, somewhat different than what we saw earlier on with the Funkster, who, by the way, will be in both Dayton and in Springfield. For some reason, uh, we understand Alan Funk is sort of channeling the spirit of his uh, namesake. Yes. Kaz and uh, Jimmy Yang doing anything they can to try to Whoa. get themselves over. Look at there. Hayashi goes to the knee of Kimo. Kimo scooped him with a slam, but he was able to slow Kimo down, and Kimo makes a tag and brings ECMO back into the ring now. And so if, there's and something to pay attention to, Kev. If they can get to that knee of chemo, maybe they can pull this thing out. Well, I know uh, ECMO grew up in Samoa, not only wrestled and played football, but also was a rugby player as well. He's been in a lot of scrums in his life, been in some scrums in the ring. And uh, Will He's been in Hayashi, some what? Scrums. Scrums. What? That's a position in rugby. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were calling him bad names. No, 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 no. Okay. No, that's only Mike Sanders that we got bad names All for. All right. So you can be a scrum and you're an okay guy, right? That's right. You're you're a part of a scrum. It's a good thing. <laughs> right now, I don't. I think I'd rather be part of a scrum than be in uh, Kasayashi's shoes. Yes, you would. <laughs> wow. Never mind the yow. You guys better get in here and wrestle. Some nice new gimmicks, some nice new clothes for Hayashi and Yang. But these two guys had no one. Oh, Tries oh. a Hurricane Rana. Oh, what power. What power by him. Oh, wait a minute. Hurricane Try Rana it. attempt again. Oh! Eki drops him. And I mean drives him with that power bomb. Drop kick to the head by Yang as he goes to work on ECMO. Kimo. Hard he out to the floor. And look at Kaz here. This guy is game. Yeah, look here. Russ the Rogue McCullough. Who the hell is this? Russ McCullough. What the hell is he doing in there? No, he's in there, I don't think. This is one of the big guys that was in the six man last week. And right now, this might be Russ. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute.
Bay Community College. The Island Boys are together united and standing strong. And of course, it will be Russ McCullough, Haku, and their partner facing that trio in the ring. Can you imagine the poundage, the poundage that we are going to incur in that ring on Wednesday night? Just these three guys take us up to it about 1,400 pounds. And Kevin, can you imagine squaring off with that's almost seven feet, Russ McCullough, Aku. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back to the ring here. I guess the uh, Yanger and Hayashi didn't learn their lesson. They are game, if nothing else. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I wonder if they have heard about discretion being the better part of the battle. No, I don't think so. Maybe a quick phone call to Tiger Hung Low. Yes. I think we're about to, what's going on? Oh, no. No, don't do it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Rakishi. Oh. With a stink oh, face. Oh, the on stink the face. Double stink face on Hayashi. And, yeah. and we've got to get out. Kevin has been so great. Oh, it was great. We'll see all you fans Wednesday night in Dayton, Friday night in Springfield. That's that for Kevin Kelly and everyone here. Saying so.